We are back with another top 10 video. Today we're going to be going over my top 10 primary weapons in Warframe. Bear in mind I have made a few videos like this one before so in this video I wanted to go over the top 10 weapons that are a mix of meta and non-meta primary weapons in Warframe. So if you see some weird options that's why. Of course this is just my opinion you may not agree and I would like to hear your top 10 primary weapons in the comments below and maybe I'll make another part. Before we go into the video, a huge thank you to our channel members for your amazing support. First and foremost, I just want to get this out of the way, it's no secret that the two best primaries are still the OG and Kanan weapons, the Fenmore and the Felox. So real quick, to get the builds out of the way, they are both MR14 and they both come from the Zaramon. This is the Felox build that I run here, we make use of primed ammo stock because we use the Evolution Evolved Autoloader which from my experience is significantly better. Here is the end game build here, if you don't have the primed mods just use the normal versions. The evolutions are Frictionless Flight, Evolved Autoloader, Racking Wrath and Devastating Attrition. For the Fenmore, here is the late game build, if you don't have Prime Shred then just run normal fire rate. The evolutions are Rapid Wrath, Execution of Fortune, Elemental Excess and Devouring Attrition. I have already covered these weapons before so that's that. But first. This video is sponsored by Hero Wars. You know those bizarre and wild video game ads you see on the internet about the guy who gets into the crazy situations? Well I'm here to tell you that this game is actually real. It is Hero Wars. It's that time of the year, it is Christmas time and Hero Wars is bringing the Christmas spirit already. This game is bringing so many activities during the festive season, progress through your advent calendar, unlock free battle pass rewards, collect new heroes and decorate your Christmas tree for a bunch of amazing gifts and piece together a mysterious story of Dominion. In Hero Wars, you can play online, raid menacing bosses with your friends or guildmates, or if you prefer battling your friends, then there's a PvP mode called Arena. Here you will fight other players for the number one position on the leaderboard and tons of loot. This game has six amazing modes for you, from a single player story campaign to amazing titan battles, to exciting expeditions and a roguelike tower. There's a couple more, but I don't want to spoil it for you. You need to find it out for yourself. Hero Wars is constantly being updated. The developers actually listen to the community and give the players what they need. Because of this, they have over <clears throat> 100 million players worldwide. When you play Hero Wars, you will only get the best experience. Right now, the developers are giving away five top heroes to new players. Who's the fifth? Download the game and find out. You also get 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold coins as well. Besides pure gameplay, Hero Wars also has rich lore to offer you. It's a whole new universe to discover. Nexus has just released a brand new animated short called Lost Hero. In the story, you will find the secrets of the main characters Galahad Aurora and their relationships with the main villain Arc Demon. It's a blast and there is a massive plot twist at the end. Follow the link in the comments to watch it after you finish my video. It's time to be a hero. Click the link in the description or scan my QR code and start playing Hero Wars right now. I'll see you there my fellow heroes. The first weapon on this list is the Cedar. I have already covered this weapon before but the Cedar is just too good not to talk about. The Cedo is a shotgun that has a unique alternate fire that throws out a glaive, which bounces between enemies up to 11 times. The glaive explodes in a 6 meter radius on impact and will prime the enemies with toxin, cold, electricity, heat as well as blast. Multi-shot affects the amount of glaives sent out, but what makes this weapon so unique is the Cedo has built-in condition overload. You will get 60% bonus damage per unique status effect on an enemy. So the Cedo is a great primer and also is a great damage dealing weapon because of this passive. This can also be paired with Galvanized Savvy which also adds onto the added damage per status effect. The Cedo is an MR8 weapon which can be obtained through Deimos but you can just buy it from another player for really cheap as it's easy to farm. It's an extremely good weapon for such a low MR requirement. It is really good for mid to late star chart and also steel path. It's also really good to use the Cedo as a primer so that you can use a secondary of your liking to scale galvanized shot for your secondary. For the early MR players, you can run a build like this. We focus on flat damage, viral, and hunting munitions for slash procs. If you don't have the 6060 mods like Toxic Barrage and Chilling Reload, then just use the normal elemental mods for that. For the end game players, this is a build that you can run, focusing on pure raw damage with crit. Here we have Primed Ravage, but if you don't have that, just use the normal version. Galvanized Acceleration is optional, so you can get away with a 3 former build if you don't use it, but it does help quite a bit with the glaive speed. You can either go Deadhead or Merciless, I prefer Merciless because of the 30% reload. This build is focused on more raw damage while relying on your viral procs to help you with the slash from hunting munitions. 
You can swap up Prime Ravage for a Bane if you wish. How to play the Cedo? Very simple. Just use the alternate fire every time you see a group of enemies, which will then prime them and proceed to use your normal fire to shred through them. If you want to recall the glaive, you can do so by clicking the alternate fire once and it will return to you sooner. I highly recommend this shotgun, it is insanely good all the way up to late game. Moving on to the next weapon, which is the Convectrix. Convectrix is an MR8 beam shotgun that can be obtained through the energy lab in your clan dojo. It's a beam weapon that starts outwards and combines together to one solid beam. With an insane amount of status chance for slash, you get slash procs like this. The Convectrix also has an alternate fire that spreads the beam outwards and continuously sweeps back and forth. This is nice if you're wanting to sweep the area in a cone and kill the enemies in a range instead of just one single beam. This weapon has an exclusive mod called Efficient Beams which allows you to only consume ammo when dealing damage and gives you a hefty 150% status chance. It is an expensive mod, about 40 platinum on the market but absolutely worth the investment. Without this mod, the Convectrix melts through ammo quite easily. For early game players, you can use this setup here. We run viral so our slash procs do more damage, and then we run sweeping serration to increase our slash weighting so we apply more slash procs. Efficient beams is a must, so try and get this mod as fast as you can, otherwise the weapon will still work without it. Just make sure to use an ammo mutation mod, although you will need one regardless, but still, this beam weapon burns through its ammo. Now, motor setup is quite a nice mod. Every time you double jump or bullet jump, you get 100% critical chance and status chance for 4 seconds. This is entirely up to you whether or not you like this playstyle. It's a nice status chance increase and allows you to deal more damage, but some people may not like the whole jumping and so on every 4 seconds just to keep this buff up. So if you like motor setup, then use it. Or you can replace this mod with a bane of your choice to do even more damage. We go an unranked toxic barrage, so our viral weighting is lower and chilling reload for reload speed. And then flat damage and fire rate. For the later game players, we can run this setup. This works really well against steel path enemies and galvanized mods make a huge difference. The arcanes can be merciless or dexterity. And then for the last build, it's a bit different. We scale crit damage and crit chance. This shreds. But I am using a Riven here. This weapon really works well with the Riven, well, obviously. Duh. If you can get a higher slash weighting, fire rate, multi-shot, or status chance, then that will be really good on a Riven. This setup does require you to prime with a secondary for viral. If you don't have a Riven, then just go fire rate in this Riven slot here, and then you will melt everything. That is the Convectrix. It's more of a single target weapon, but with the right setup, you can shred groups of enemies. You can also make use of the alternate fire to kill more enemies, and you could mod for punch through even if you'd like. Pretty straightforward weapon, slash demon, and quite fun. Moving on to the next weapon, which will be the Corinth Prime. Now, I am aware this weapon is an MR14 weapon, but I cannot explain to you how satisfying the alternate fire of this weapon is. It's just too good sometimes. Now, I will admit, it does need some armor stripping for steel path enemies to one-shot them. It's not the highest AoE damage dealing weapon, but it's still fun nonetheless. It's a buckshot shotgun that does a considerable amount of damage as a normal shotgun. With hunting munitions, this thing does really well if you prime with viral against steel path enemies. The primed version is better than the original because the primed is a magazine reload versus the normal one being an individual reload. But if you are a lower MR player and you really want to try the current out, then you can use this cheap one former build here for the base current. But I'll be honest, you're better off using another weapon. At MR14, you should have galvanized mods by now, so I will show you the end game builds. Just use the normal versions if you don't have the prime versions. The first setup is for your main fire, dealing quite a bit of damage against enemies, but again, you will need to prime them with viral. For the AoE, it's AoE, so we don't have much options besides focusing on flat damage, crit damage, and multi shot. If you're going to be using the comments for the alternate fire, just know it's not going to be for tanky targets. It's more for clearing massive groups of enemies. It's not OP by any means but it's just really fun. If you want to buff the alternate fire consider using helmets like Eclipse or Nourish or even gun buff Saren and Hydroid. Overall this weapon's not overpowered it's just fun and satisfying to see groups of enemy getting deleted when you armor strip them. 
and you use the alternate fire. The main fire is also really good if you do want to use that. Moving on to the next weapon, which is the Phage. Now the Phage is the infested version of the Convectrix, but this beam shotgun does sick. I mean, huge amounts of heat procs. The way this weapon works is you have seven beams, which start out in a fan, but when you aim, it goes into a tight spread. If you shoot while not aiming, then it'll just stay in this fan mode. It also has innate viral as well, which is really good for increasing your heat dots. It's an MR11 weapon that can be obtained through your bio lab, in your clan dojo. Now this weapon is generally more of a single target weapon. When you are facing Thraxes, Demolishers, Xmas units, this thing just melts it. But it can be a slight AoE clearer when you have a way to pull the enemies in and just shoot normally and not aim so it creates this fan but the range is really short. Against Steel Path Thraxes, I was hitting upwards of about 1.5 mil to 3 million heat ticks. And even for normal enemies, when you stack it up, you just need to apply a small amount of heat procs and they die. For the mid game players, if you are MR11 and don't have galvanized mods, you can use the simple cheap setup here, which focuses on heat crit and a bane for more damage. For the later game players, this setup here is insanely strong. If you don't have primed, then just use a normal. Instead of me saying that for every single build in this video, just keep in mind that for the rest of the weapons I show in this video and the builds that I show that if you don't have the primed just use the normal but don't get a fright when you see only primed mods. I always say that my builds are templates change them to your playstyle and how you like to play the game. Use my builds as guidelines. Overall the phage really surprised me. It's not a bad weapon yes it's not an insanely high kill per second weapon it's more of a single target but can kill groups. If you want to make it better for killing groups, consider using Kulervo or modding it for punch through. Definitely worth building it if you're looking for something different and you're wanting to move into tougher content like Voikerskane and Disruption. Now let's move on to the Kuva Kortak. Again, another weapon that I paid zero attention to until I decided to use it randomly one day. As this is a Kuva weapon, whenever you complete the war within Questline, you can get access to Kuva weapons. I went for a Toxin Progenitor. The Kuva Kortak has two fire modes, auto when you are not aiming and a four round burst when you are aiming. The aiming fire mode has an innate 0.5 meter punch through. Now the Kuva Kortak does really good damage with both fire modes. Slapping on hunting munitions and viral plus a gun condition overload, this weapon shreds enemies. I was really surprised when I use this weapon and I really enjoy using it as a fun alternative. If you start firing in the auto mode, i.e. hip firing, and then proceed to aim while shooting, you will stay in auto mode and not switch to burst. You can also fire the burst mode in rapid succession by aiming in and out quickly. Using the auto mode will help for groups of enemies, and then when you need to deal with the thicker boys, you can switch to the burst fire, which will make light work of them. When it comes to the builds, remember Kuva weapons can go up to level 40 with 5 former, although you do not need 5 former to complete this build. For the lower MR players, this simple hunting munitions viral setup works really well. For star chart, you will melt everything with this weapon. For the later game players, here is your build here. Same setup except we use the galvanized mods and galvanized shot. It's really good for those tougher steel part targets like Thraxes and Demolishers if you're going to be priming them. Prime Shred is flexible, I know not everyone has this mod, so if you don't have the mod just go flat fire rate for this or vile acceleration. Overall the Kuva Kortak is a really solid choice that isn't really spoken about much, it's just overlooked, it does some really good damage for Star Chart all the way to late steel part. Moving on to the Kuva Zar. Now I know, the ammo nerf happened and the use of AoE weapons has dropped drastically. But the Zar with an ammo mutation mod is still perfectly capable and still does quite a large amount of damage. Remember, the ammo got nerfed, not the damage. All you need to do is just pick your shots a bit more carefully, that's all. Besides, in the event of you running out of ammo, it's not hard to switch to your secondary or melee, kill a few enemies, and then you can just continue to nuke everything. This weapon still shreds everything including steel part. For those of you that don't know what the Tsar is, it's a hand cannon that shoots out a cannonball that explodes in a 7 meter radius on impact. It will then split into three smaller bombs that rain down on the point of impact. It also has an alternate fire mode which is called Barrage which switches the Tsar to a tight spread shotgun which has a lot of multi shot and is very strong against tougher targets. The reload of this weapon really sucks so you want to mod for reload speed. I went for a Toxin Zar so we can mod for viral as of course we go viral hunting munitions. If you are struggling with ammo there's two things that you can do. Either equip vigilante supplies or a rifle ammo mutation. 
The second thing you could do if you really want better ammo sustain is use carrier with the ammo case mod. This will help those of you who are still in the star chart or if you just want to main this weapon entirely. For the builds, beginners can use this one here. The build will do fine in the star chart. For the later game players, you have this build here, but here is the thing. Primed magazine warp is flexible. You can either have more magazine capacity, which pushes the magazine up to eight, or you can have ammo drop for more ammo maximum, which pushes it up to nine, or you can put primed firestorm for a bigger AOE, or you can use galvanized aptitude, which will not affect the AOE, However, it will affect the Barrage ultimate fire. With this mod, you will shred tough enemies with a bit of priming and using the Barrage. The Zar does plenty of damage, so putting Galvanized Aptitude using the cannon to clear all the easy enemies and then switching to Barrage occasionally for the tougher Xmas units works perfectly fine. It's up to you. To put it plainly, the Kuva Zar is still a really good weapon, but remember you can't just spam your shots anymore. You have to fire slower and allow for the slash procs to kill enemies to sustain your ammo better. I still really recommend this weapon if used correctly, it's very capable. Now let's move on to the first Incarnan weapon on this list. The remaining weapons on this list will be the new Incarnan weapons. The first one is the Latron. I think we all know where you get these new Incarnan weapons, they come from the Daveri circuit game mode. Also, these Incarna weapons can only be acquired when you reach Steel Pass, so I will assume everyone will at least have Galvanized mods. The Latron is quite a unique one. It's a, a bouncy boy. The Incarna form changes it to shoot out a hit scan projectile that ricochets up to six times. It will explode on each impact. It's really fun when you get into smaller rooms and shoot out a whole bunch of times and you just get all these projectiles bouncing around everywhere. It, it's funny. The evolutions I went for were Riddle Target, Marksman's Focus, and Critical Parallel. The first setup that I run is the usual Viral Hunter Munitions. Speed Trigger is flexible, I just like the faster fire rate as it is generally a slow firing weapon in the Incarnate form. If you don't have primed cryo rounds, you can just use the 6060 mod for cold. Build 2 is a single target build. This will only work if you focus on actually hitting the tougher target for galvanized aptitude to proc. The explosions won't be affected by it. And I use serration for more flat damage, but you can switch it out for a bane. I was using this build against Thraxes, so having a bane doesn't make any difference, so that's why I used flat damage. It's a really fun weapon, I do enjoy it a lot when I use it, and I also think the normal fire is one of the most satisfying gun sounds in this game. I don't know why, it's just very nice. Also, you can even run Galvanized Scope to make this thing a red crit beast if you wanted to as well. Highly recommend it, it's really fun. I did choose the Prime over the Wraith version, though this is up to you to decide which one you want. Moving on to the Mighty Strun in Karnan. The Shotgun. Ah, yes. This is just a status god. This weapon can easily go over 200, 300, 400% status chance if you wanted to, and even further with a ribbon. The incarnate form of the strand turns it into a cannon, which shoots out a projectile that explodes on impact with a 4 meter explosion radius. But because of the fourth evolution being multiplicative, this weapon applies so many status effects. I do prefer running the status chance version of this weapon over the crit though. That's just my playstyle, I prefer it like that. The evolutions I went for are Blazing Barrel, Rapid Reinforcement, and Elemental Balance so we can have that insanely high status chance. The builds I run are a normal hunting munitions viral with motor setup. This is flexible though. This is for your grenier targets or armored targets. Now I have been playing around with using sweeping serration to increase the slash weighting over hunting munitions, but I found that they are really similar so you can make the choice here. I did find that sweeping serration did give me a slight damage boost from the bleed procs, but it's marginal, they still die very quickly. Then we have one of my favorite weapon builds in Warframe, and that is the Corpus Killer. Because of the high status, you can mod for flat toxin, which will apply multiple toxin procs at a time which will shred Corpus enemies. It's really fun, it's like a gun version of the Serata, and I enjoy playing it every now and then. This is the build here. The Strun is definitely one of the top Incarna weapons and one of the top shotguns to use. It does an insane amount of damage and just molts everything. I highly recommend making a build for it. Moving on to the Burst On Incarnan. I present to you the A10 Warthog of Warframe. I love this weapon so much. It's been one of my favorite weapons for a long time. I use it for general missions, Eidolon hunts, Archon hunts, anything. It's just too satisfying to use. Red crits, high fire rate, and an absolutely fat magazine of 600 bullets. It's just too good. The evolutions I went for are Fortress Salvo, Ready Retaliation, and then Absolute Valor. The build I use is this one right here. 
Vital Sense here is flexible, you can use Prime Shred for more fire rate, or you can just use a pure fire rate mod. You cannot go wrong with the Burst on a Karnan, it's too good. I put it on the Prime version and I love it, it's so good. I, I just, I don't have anything more to say about it, it's just, it, the weapon speaks for itself. Moving on to the last weapon on this list, and that will be the legendary Incarnan Torrid. Right now, the Incarnan Torrid is arguably the best weapon to use for your everyday mission. If you're not scaling to level cap, it is the best weapon to use. I have never struggled against any enemy when it comes to this weapon. The Incarnan form turns it into a toxin beam weapon that chains up to 5 enemies that are within 6 meters of each other. This thing becomes a phantasma on steroids. It has replaced most beam weapons and taken the throne. It just does too much damage. The evolutions are Final Fusillade, Swift Deliverance and Commodore's Fortune. The build I always run is this. Now I run Corrosive because for the most part I am running Nourish on my frames, which will help with the viral procs for Slash. If you're not running Nourish then you can switch out for Viral there. Bladed Rounds is really good for scaling crit damage and then we go Galvanize Scope so we get those juicy raid crit. I do sometimes run a corpus version which works really well. Like I said, it's one of, if not the best weapon to use right now. If you pair it with Saren, it's even stronger and any damage buffing frames. This weapon scales well into Steel Path but starts to fall off around level 5000-ish. But for the most part, people aren't going to be doing that, so it's just, it's perfect. But you can just clear groups of enemies with this weapon like it's nothing. And that concludes the top 10 weapons in Warframe. Yes, there are other primary incarnates, I'll admit. I don't have the Mitre Incarnon, I know, scandalous. But there are other options too. I just like these ones, I wanted to make a mix of early to late-ish MR weapons. For the beginners that are watching this, just know that really any primary from MR0 to 7 will work with Star Chart. All you need to do is build for flat damage, crit chance, crit damage and fire rate. Those 4 mods maxed out is all you need for early MR weapons and you will easily do Star Chart. But that is all for today, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, this video took me forever to make. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you all in the next one.